I really enjoy after completing staining slides the opportunity to put them onto a, an actual microscope and then to scan around and locate areas of interest like this nicely stained artery. But it's important to recognise that there is increasing value in what we call virtual microscopy or digital pathology. So in this case the conventional microscope is replaced by a high resolution slide scanner such as this one here which is uh, produced by 3D Histech. So I thought I'd take the opportunity just to show how this particular uh, device looks once you've scanned the slides in and you look at the slides using this, this case viewer software. So these are some slides that have been created by a postgraduate student at QUT, Raymond Kwan, and we've been particularly interested in looking at staining with trichromes in skin and um, you can see there that after actually looking at a slide you've got the ability to change the label to say whether it's been examined or not. So this is really a product that's designed for pathologists uh, for looking at different cases of patients. If we scroll down here to the bottom we've got a nicely stained control section of placenta and so there's the full scanned image and uh, looks pretty good but of course we would want to uh, change the magnification so we can do that by clicking on these virtual lenses so 2x or 5x or 10x etc and as we begin to increase the magnification you can see that that's a really nice outcome for the MSB we've got some nice red fibrin we've got some vibrant blue collagen nice strong nuclei and some yellow red blood cells. The other way to adjust the magnification is by just by simply using the mouse to zoom in or out and there's even a bit of extended uh, magnification beyond what has been achieved using the scanning. We can scroll around using the mouse as well and so it's a really convenient tool for uh, moving around this, this whole slide. Now so that we don't lose where we are there's a nice option to bring up a slide overview window and the value of that is at any time as you're scrolling around you can see in the left hand window there exactly where you are in relation to the whole surface of that, of that tissue. There's also this convenient magnifier window that by moving that around you can put it on top of an area of interest and just look at some of those details at a higher magnification. The other way to use this is to pin it using that little tool in the right hand corner and then locating an area of interest now you can use your cursor and as you move around on the full size image you get the magnified view in the magnified window box. Sometimes as you may be aware when you've got a mounted slide it may not always be in the right orientation that's convenient for taking a, a particular picture. So of course you can do this to some extent on an actual microscope but um, here on the virtual microscope you've got the ability to rotate pretty much to any angle that you would like and so it's a really useful way of framing areas of interest. So now that we've got this area of blood vessels sitting nice and parallel we can then go to the snapshot function and as you can see there it's recorded an image of the full screen and there's various annotations that can be applied. Of course it's always good to have a scale bar so we can highlight that and we can change the location depending upon what is behind it just to make it more visible. Likewise we can click on the label so this has been scanned in at the same time and so we can um, select again the, the location depending upon what might be behind it. Of course we want to save that and resolution is important with digital images 
A print resolution of 300 dpi is pretty standard. And then we can just save that as either a, a JPEG or, or TIFF um, in any format that, that we prefer. The next option that we have using this software is to perform some basic measurement functions. So as you can imagine, a pathologist or researcher may be interested in um, generating quantifiable data from their histological section. So here we can just drag across using the cursor tool here and we can obtain an approximate measurement for each of these blood vessels. Now there's an alternative way to generate measurements using this software from the annotations menu. So you see we've got a series of, of shaped icons. One way if you're just looking to get an approximate measurement is you can select this circle or oval tool and then by right clicking we can make some minor adjustments so that it fits a little bit better. So we see there we've got an approximate area of about 6,428 square microns. So depending upon the degree of accuracy that you need, that might be okay. Um, but there is actually an alternative way of measuring, which is probably likely to give you a more accurate measurement. So if we go back to the annotations tool, there's another option here to select this closed polygon tool. So by making a series of short straight line measurements and by connecting those together, and I'm not going to do this to any degree of accuracy, um, if this was for any uh, research type of application where accuracy is key, it would be best to do these sorts of measurements in a masked fashion where you actually don't know the, the identity of the, um, the slide being measured. So you see there, that's actually now 6,085 square microns. So we've managed to shave off a little bit of excess in um, using that polygon tool. Okay, so the other options that we've got here, if we go to the, um, the slide operations menu, you can actually get some interesting information about the pixel intensity. So both the location within the section, but if we were interested in the particular color, for example, here if we move the cursor over the white area, pretty much we've got very high uh, values. So within a, a digital image, white is a combination of red, green, and blue. If we hold it over a dark area like here, then the numbers are are very low and then depending upon whether it's over say yellow or blue we get different mixtures of those three channels. So there is that potential there for those who are interested to obtain some relative information uh, about, the, um, about the level of colour in those uh, three channels of red, green and blue. So just dropping back now to a lower magnification, you can see how easy that is to scan around. And once again, we can just rotate around. There's no doubt it's a very convenient tool. Um, these files are, however, very large. They're in the order of about two gigabytes, which you can imagine is, is larger than a standard definition movie. So it does take a little bit of processing um, power within your computer. I actually crashed mine a couple of times while trying to produce this video today. But it's a really convenient tool and something that is a, a worthy complement to the tools that are available for a histologist.